All right, here we go. Lesson 10, six. This is all about shortcuts today, okay? Um, we are doing um, three or four shortcuts here. First one, I'm not even sure you need to write this one down, but let me introduce it to you anyways. If you have the same arc, so let me highlight here in the diagram. There's the arc, yes? And it's inscribed, or I should say it's intercepted by two, I should use two different colors here, by two other inscribed angles, then guess what? These two angles have to be congruent. Should be fairly obvious because that those inscribed angles will be half the arc measurements. So they'll be the same, all right? So again, uh, you're not gonna have, you'll use the concept more than you will quote it. I don't think you quote it at all. Uh, this one is very similar. I'm not gonna even, well, we'll say it's the same thing uh, because if I have two arcs, all right? And I know that these two arcs are congruent. So this arc and this arc. Oh, then the angles, right, that intercept them, that angle there, right, and that angle there. Those angles have to be the same measurement. Uh, what's kind of weird is that this one here is a chord chord angle, right? Whereas this one here is a tangent chord. But because they have the same relationship, they're both half, then uh, the measure of angle D has to equal the measure of angle C, D, E. Okay? Sorry, that's the measure of angle P. All right, so those two angles have to be the same, given that they're the same chords. This next one here I think is useful to write down. So get this in your notes. Uh, I'm gonna call it the look for diameter theorem. If you see an angle that's inscribed and that it intercepts, right, a chord that happens to be a diameter, then we know, oh, this arc here measures 180 degrees. Oh. So then that tells me that angle is a 90. So most of the time then you end up with a little Pythagorean problem because this triangle here is now a right triangle. Or again, you could do Sokotoa or special right triangles. All sorts of things apply now because you have a right triangle. So look for the diameter because it's hiding there somewhere probably in the bushes. All right, last one. Uh, this is called a minor arc supplementary theorem. I don't think that's a great name for it. Uh, it doesn't really describe things for you very well. Um, so I'm gonna suggest that if you use this, that you just use this phrase. Probably easier to use, but feel free uh, to use that name. So what does it mean? So if I look at a tangent tangent, yeah? And that's what we have here. I have a vertex sitting out here and I've got a tangent at these two spots. So, um, so there's my vertex. How does this angle relate to this side? Well, let me do a short little proof uh, of what that relationship is. Uh, let me do it over here. Okay, we know that uh, because the full circle is 360, that this remaining major arc is 360 minus y. I have some tango music in the background. Hopefully it's not too distracting. So I'm gonna say 360 minus y minus the other y, right? Divided by two should give me x. So cleaning this up a little bit, 360 minus two y divided by two is x. So now if I do my division, right? Divide the 360 by the two, divide the two by the two, we get 360 divided by two is 180, 2y divided by two is y equals x. And now I'm gonna casually toss the y to the other side. The reason is this now tells me how the two angles are related. How does x relate to y? Oh, they add up to 180. Oh, therefore they are supplementary. So, 
in the tangent, if it's a tangent tangent exterior angle, it's supplementary to what we call the minor arc that's intercepted. All right. And I think that's it. So you're going to get problems kind of like this, and they're going to say, oh, look at that. You have a chord AC is 40, right? And we know the radius is 20.5. Yeah? Uh, what is this side over here? Oh. Well, uh, guess what? That's a diameter. So that is a 90 degree. Oh, so I can do Pythagoras. So this side is also 20.5. So I got 20, uh, 41, uh, and I think uh, x squared, if I call that side x, plus uh, 40 squared equals 41 squared. I think this is a triple. A moment while I do my calculations. See if you can beat me to them. Yeah, that's nine. Positive or negative 9, but again, we're going to ignore the negative 1 because there's no such thing as a negative distance. All right, well, good luck in your homework. Hopefully this works out for you. And um, uh, we have one more section here, 10 seconds.